Good morning, Great Twelves. We are going to continue today with the foreign exchange markets. So this lesson just follows on yesterday's lesson. What we are going to look at today is the changes in the exchange rate. Yesterday, obviously, we looked at how the exchange rate is formed. And we said that the exchange rate is formed through the interaction between demand and supply. And we did the graph. You must be able to draw the graph and interpret the graph. Today, we are going to add to those graphs. And we are going to see that what happens if there is an increase in demand or an increase in supply. Okay. So what can happen is that the value of the currency of one country can increase or decrease in terms of the currency of another country. So once the exchange rate is established, that exchange rate is not set in stone by any means. That exchange rate can change any, any time. All right. Literally, if you're using a floating exchange rate system like we are, every single time that somebody buys currency or somebody sells currency internationally in the world, the exchange rate potentially can change, obviously, depending on the size of that transaction. All right. But now when we look at the changes in the exchange rate, I did mention briefly yesterday that we distinguish between two different kinds of exchange rate systems that will determine how an exchange rate is decided on. We have a fixed exchange rate system and then we have a floating exchange rate system. So when we are using a fixed exchange rate system, that means that the exchange rate is going to be relatively stable. I know fixed sounds like it should be the same always. That is not 100% true. Okay, obviously tomorrow we are going to look at the um, different exchange rate systems, how interest rates are actually formed. But for now, you just need to know that there's two. Okay, there's two forms of exchange rate systems, a fixed exchange rate system and then a floating exchange rate system. Okay, so when there's changes in the value of the currency, it will have different causes depending on whether a country is using a fixed exchange rate system or a floating exchange rate system. When the change in the exchange rate is as a result of government intervention, so the government deliberately goes and they buy currency or they sell currency to influence the value of their currency, then we have to do with a fixed exchange rate system. And then the terminology that you are going to use will be revaluation and devaluation. You have to make sure that you are using the correct terminology. So in a fixed exchange rate system, the changes in the exchange rate will happen as a result of government intervention. And then the terms that we use will be revaluation and devaluation. Okay, what is revaluation? When we have revaluation, this means that there's an increase in the value of the domestic currency of the RAND as a result of government intervention. So the central bank, okay, in our case the Reserve Bank, will deliberately increase the value of the country's currency by buying up the RAND. The more RAND they buy, the more scarce the RAND will become, and that is what is going to push up the price, All right? That will increase the value of the RAND. So when there's an increase in the value of a currency, as a result of direct intervention by the government, by the central bank, they deliberately do something by currency to increase the value of that currency. That is going to be known as revaluation. On the opposite side, if there's devaluation, this means that there was a decrease in the value of the domestic currency, again, as a result of government intervention. So in this case, the central bank deliberately decreases the value of the country's currency by selling RAND. Okay, so with a the revaluation, they will buy RAND to make RAND scarce, which will increase the value of the RAND. With a devaluation, they will deliberately sell RAND to create an oversupply, a surplus of RAND on the markets, which means then the value of the RAND will decrease. Okay, so the minute that you see revaluation and devaluation, you know you have to do with a fixed exchange rate system. And revaluation is when there is an increase in the value of the currency as a result of direct intervention. Devaluation, when there's a decrease in the value of the currency as a result of direct intervention. All right, 
You'll see the difference now between this and when we're using a floating exchange rate system. Okay, so when the changes in the exchange rate happens as a result of market forces, so demand and supply, then we have to work with a floating exchange rate system. In a floating exchange rate system, the value of the RAND is purely determined by demand and supply. All right, so with a fixed exchange rate system, where the changes in the exchange rate, the revaluation or the devaluation, happens as a result of direct government intervention, in the case of a floating exchange rate system, any changes to the value of the RAND happens as a result of demand and supply. In this case, there's no government interference. The central bank is not doing anything. People out there are buying RAND. People out there are selling RAND. And that is going to have an effect on the value of the RAND. So in the case of a floating exchange rate system, the terminology that we are going to use is appreciation and depreciation. So in the case of an appreciation, this means that there's an increase in the value of your currency as a result of demand and supply, market forces. Okay, and this basically means that the RAND is getting stronger, which means less RAND is given for every dollar or every pound or every yen or whatever the case may be. Okay, so when there's an increase in the value of your currency as a result of market forces, then it is called appreciation, okay? And this means that the RAND is getting stronger. Your currency is getting stronger. Less of your currency is going to be given to buy a foreign currency, all right? And if you give an example, if you look at this example, if the original exchange rate was 10 Rand 41 or 51 to the dollar, and now the exchange rate goes to 6 Rand 44 to the dollar, this means that less RAND is given to the dollar, and this means that the RAND has appreciated. Now, you will see when we draw the graphs also just now, when there's a change in exchange rate, automatically it implies if the one currency is appreciating, the other currency automatically will be depreciating. Okay, when you give these examples, you must be very careful to make sure that your example is correct, that it makes sense. Okay. Because you need to show where the exchange rate is coming from and then what it is now. All right, you can't just say, if you have to give an example of an appreciation, you can't just say 10 Rand equals $1. Okay, that is not an appreciation, that is an exchange rate. Where is it coming from? What was it before? You have to show the exchange rate was 10 Rand 51 to the dollar. And now it is 6 Rand 44 to the dollar. So that the examiners can see that you understand less Rand is now given for each dollar. Okay, if we go to the depreciation, obviously this is just the opposite of an appreciation. And with the depreciation, this implies that there's a decrease in the value of the currency, again, as a result of your market forces. So because of changes in demand and supply, the value of your currency decreases, then that is called depreciation. And this means that your currency, the RAND in our case, is getting weaker, so more RAND is given for every single dollar. Okay, every dollar we buy is becoming more and more expensive. And again, if you give an example, okay, the original exchange rate was 5 Rand 70 to the dollar. Now, after changes in demand and supply, it is 7 Rand 98 to the dollar. And you can see here we are now giving more RAND for every dollar. So the RAND became weaker, the RAND depreciated, but the dollar appreciated. Okay, because for every dollar they give us, they're getting more RAND. All right. Now, I want you just to make sure in your notes, the second bullock here, okay, the RAND is getting stronger, and this one here, the RAND is getting weaker. I don't think that is in your notes. You have to write it down. Because this is questions that they ask very often for eight marks. Okay, very, very often. They would ask you to distinguish between an appreciation and a depreciation. So you need more information than what you have in your textbook. All right, so if you provide the official definition here, and then you say that the RAND is getting stronger, it means less RAND is given, and then the example, remember an example is only one mark. So if you just give the definition an example, 
you'll get three marks for appreciation and three marks for depreciation. So you have to make sure that you write enough. Okay, you also have to understand the difference between appreciation and depreciation because very often they also ask this in a data response question, okay, which is one that I'm going to do with you just now. Okay, they can also ask you what is the difference between a depreciation and a devaluation. Okay, then you're going to combine obviously this one and the devaluation. Right, then you're going to obviously say a depreciation will happen in the case of a, a free floating exchange rate system. The devaluation will happen in the case of a fixed exchange rate system. Depreciation is when there's a decrease in the value of the currency as a result of market forces. Devaluation is a decrease in the value of the currency as a result of direct government intervention. Okay, so you just have to look very carefully at what they are asking. Okay. Now, as I said, the exchange rate is going to change whenever the demand or the supply of foreign currency is going to change. So when there's an increase in the demand for dollar or an increase in the supply of rand or an increase in the, de the demand for rand or an increase in the supply of dollar, obviously your currency is going to change. Okay, from this point forward, we are going to work with a floating exchange rate system. Okay, because we are now going to see what is going to happen in the case where there's an increase or a decrease in demand? Okay, increase in a decrease in demand, increase or a decrease in supply. Okay, so what is going to happen to the Rand dollar exchange rates? First of all, when there's an increase in the demand for dollars. Okay, we are first going to again look at this pink little block. All right, now first of all, why will there be an increase in the demand for dollars? Remember those six reasons that we discussed yesterday, okay? An increase in the demand, remember we have a demand for dollars because we have to pay America for stuff. Okay, what stuff are we paying them for? We have imported stuff from America that now we need to pay them for. They need to be paid in dollars. We want to make deposits in American banks, so we need dollars. We want to buy shares on their stock exchange. We want to go there on holiday to have some spending money. Okay, any of those six reasons that we discussed yesterday. All right. So these are just an expansion of what we did yesterday. Okay, now when there's an increase in the demand for dollars, it means that at every single price, more dollars are demanded than before. Okay, remember this is not just a change in a price. Okay, remember this again boils down to the difference between demand and quantity demanded that you did last year. Okay, an increase in demand implies that your entire demand curve is going to shift. If it is an increase in demand, it is going to shift to the right. If there is a decrease in demand, it will shift to the left. Okay, so again, I'm going to quickly draw this graph with you. This is very important. You have to be able to draw these graphs yourself and explain them. And also, if they give it to you in a data response question, which they do extremely often, you have to be able to interpret the graph and answer questions, understand what is happening to the exchange rates in the graph, why is there a shift in the graph, what is happening in the graph. Okay, so if we quickly look at the increase in demand for dollars, that's the first one that we are looking at. Okay, remember we said yesterday that your demand is always going to have a negative slope. All right, and also just again, remember you have to label your graphs. Graphs that are not labeled will not get you any marks. Okay, so demand has a negative slope. There's our demand curve. Then we are going to add our supply curve. Okay, supply curve obviously has a positive slope. And then we also label. You don't have to draw these graphs with me. They are in your textbook, but I suggest that you take note on them, that once I start explaining the graph, once we've made the changes, that you actually make notes on your graph to see if there's an appreciation and depreciation or whatever the case may be, okay? So work with your graph, okay? Now we said that when demand and supply is equal, there where the two graphs intersect, that is going to be our equilibrium point, okay? Equilibrium, we're always going to label point E, all right? Just remember, we did say yesterday that because this is the market for dollars, we want to see now what effect will an increase in the demand for dollars have on the exchange rate. So this will be the demand and the supply of dollars. And then I said yesterday that when it's demand and supply in dollars, the price has to be in rand. 
Remember, if we were saying demand and supply of rand, the price would be in dollars. Okay, it's very, very important now to look at the heading and see, are we working with dollars? Are we working for rand? All right, because your scenario that you're going to be given, you have to determine, is it the demand that is changing or is it the supply that is changing? In this case now, if more South Africans go to America, it will increase the demand for dollars, but at the same time, it will increase the supply of rand. Remember, I did say yesterday, you sell one currency in order to purchase the other. So as soon as you have a demand for one currency, automatically you have a supply of another currency. Okay, so once you have your equilibrium, we just need to find our exchange rate. Okay, so we need to find the price. We need to see exactly what the price is. How many rands are we going to give for a dollar? And then we need to find also your equilibrium quantity. All right, obviously we're going to give it values because you actually get marks if there's values. Okay, I can't remember now what is on the notes. I'm just going to use my own numbers. Okay, let's say the price is 10 rand for the dollar. And at this equilibrium point, there's 100 people that is willing to buy and sell their dollars. Okay, so basically at point E, okay, at point E, the exchange rate is going to be 10 rand to one dollar. Okay, that is the situation at E1. That's the original situation. Okay, now we're going to see what happens if there's an increase in the demand for dollars. Okay, for whatever reason, more South Africans is traveling to America on holiday. More South Africans are buying American assets. More South Africans are depositing money in American banks. We are importing more stuff from America, so we have to pay them. Okay, all those things are going to cause an increase in the demand for dollars. Okay, so when the demand for dollars increase, obviously we have to shift the demand curve. So here now you have to focus very nicely. Don't make a stupid mistake and go and shift the supply curve. It is the demand for dollars that is going to change, okay? So then if we, the demand for dollars are increasing, remember our demand curve will shift to the right. If there's an increase, the demand curve shifts to the right. For a decrease, it is going to shift to the left, okay? So again, we have to label the graph, okay? This will be now D1, okay? We have a D already, so we can't give it the same name. This will be D1. Okay, so we are going to say that, we're going to show on the graph also, that there is an increase in the demand for dollars. All right, this means now that this can no longer be my equilibrium, okay, because our new equilibrium, this demand curve, remember, it doesn't exist anymore. This demand curve has shifted and it is now D1. So our new equilibrium has to be where my new demand curve and my supply curve intersect. And that is now going to be there. Yeah, where the two graph intersect, we're going to call that E1 now. Okay. And now we need to see, because the question wants to know what happens to the exchange rate if there is an increase in the demand for dollar. Okay. So we need, now, we need to now see at this new equilibrium point, what is happening to my, the value of the rand. Okay. The value of the rand, the value of the dollar. Okay. You also have to look very carefully what they're asking. What they're generally going to ask you, even if you are drawing the demand and supply of dollars, they're going to be asking you what is happening to the value of the rand, okay? Because that is our perspective. All right, so in this case now, we can see that the value of the rand, the new exchange rate there is 12, and then the new equilibrium quantity, let's say, is 120. Okay, so now we can see what happened to the exchange rate, right? At point E1, which is our new equilibrium, my new exchange rate. is going to be 12 rand equals one dollar. Okay, and remember what I said? Okay, the implication of this, it means that more rand is given. More rand is given for each dollar that we are buying. Okay, so that means that what happened to the value of the rand, and this is also where your terminology is very important. Okay, so in this case now we are going to say that the rand depreciated, all right, because more rand is given to buy a dollar. So the rand depreciated, 
but the dollar at the same time appreciated. Okay, because if you look at it from the American perspective, for one dollar, we used to give them 10 rand. Now, for one dollar, we are giving them 12 rand. So their currency is stronger. Okay, but you have to look at exactly what it is that they are asking. Okay, so if we quickly go back to the notes. Okay, this graph is the one that I've drawn just now. You'll see it's just the numbers are probably a little bit different. Okay, so when there is a new demand curve, when there's an increase in demand, as I said, we're going to shift the demand curve to the right. You find the new equilibrium. You find out what is the new exchange rate. And then you will see that the rand will depreciate and the dollar will appreciate. The reason for this is if the demand for dollar is increasing, it is making the dollar scarce. Okay, and what you must remember also, when we are increasing our demand for dollars, we are actually selling rand. And by selling rand, we are creating a surplus of rand on the international market, on the foreign exchange market. And when there's a surplus, goods lose value. Okay, like any other goods, the currency will lose value. Okay, if we now look at the other side, okay, what is going to happen if there's a change in the supply of dollars? Okay, so if we look at the other side of it now, this, again, can be, why will there be a supply of dollars? Same as what we said yesterday. There's a supply of dollars because Americans are selling their dollars. Why would they be selling their dollars? Because they are buying other currency. In this case, they will be buying rand. Why would they be buying rand? Because they have to pay us for stuff. All right, what stuff are they paying us for? We have exported minerals to them. Okay, so they have to pay us for the gold that we have exported. There's Americans wanting to deposit money in South African banks. There's Americans wanting to buy shares in South African, uh, on the South African Stock Exchange. There's Americans that want to come to South Africa for business, for holiday, to visit family, whatever the case may be. Okay, those same reasons that we discussed yesterday. Just remember, again, if there's a supply of dollars, automatically it implies a demand for rand. Okay. So again, if there's an increase in the supply of dollars, it means that the entire supply curve in this case has to shift. All right, the increase in supply means the whole graph is going to shift. All right, so if we go back here and we draw this now, okay? Obviously, we start with our original situation. You always start with your original situation. Okay, and we're going to say that this is my demand curve. Okay, there's my demand curve. But remember, we also have to label. Yeah, no label, there's no marks. Okay, so if my blue graph is my demand curve, remember demand has a negative slope. Don't lose focus and go and label your graph wrong. Make a demand curve, name it a supply curve or whatever. That is a stupid, stupid mistake to make because you lose focus. You've been doing this since grade 9, you know this. Okay, then we're going to add my supply curve. And we said supply has a positive slope. Okay, so same as any other supply curve, positive slope, we label it SS, okay, and this is our original situation, okay, we are going to say that the market is in equilibrium, there where the two graphs intersect, so again, we are going to call this point E, okay, at point E, my supply and my demand is in equilibrium, it is equal, all right, so now we need to find the original equilibrium point. Okay, we need to see what is my exchange rate at my equilibrium point. So we're going to find the price, okay, equilibrium price. And then we have to find the equilibrium quantity. Okay, there's my price. And I have to find the equilibrium quantity. Okay, then obviously we have to give them a value. Otherwise, our discussion is not going to make sense. Okay, we're going to say again that let's say it's 10 rand. And the equilibrium quantity is going to be 100. All right. Now they want to know what is going to happen if there's an increase in the supply of dollars. Okay, now chances are they're not going to ask it directly like that. They're going to ask you, draw a graph and explain what is going to happen to the value of the rand if more Americans want to visit South Africa. So you have to think, okay, when more Americans visit South Africa, there will be an increase in the supply of dollars, okay? And just again, if this is the demand and supply of dollars, your price is going to be in rand, okay? So now we, are, we know what our original situation is, okay? We're going to write here at point E, 
Okay, at point E, it's capital now. At point E, my exchange rate is one ten rand equals one dollar. Okay, that is my exchange rate at point E, my original exchange rate. Now we're going to see what is going to happen if there's an increase in the supply of dollars. Again, make sure you shift the correct curve. Okay, don't go and move the demand curve. That is not what is changing. Okay, if my supply curve is now increasing, that is going to move again to the right. Now an increase in supply moves to the right. A decrease in supply is going to move to the left. All right, so this is S1. Okay, but this means now that SS doesn't exist anymore. So SS has shifted and it has become S1. So point E is no longer my, my, my equilibrium point. I have a new equilibrium point now, and my new equilibrium point is going to be here. Okay, by E1. Okay, that is my new equilibrium point. Okay, at my new equilibrium point, I have to find what is my price, what is my quantity. All right, my equilibrium price, I'm going to indicate it on the axis. And then I'm also going to do the same thing for my equilibrium quantity. Okay, I find the value on my axis. Okay, and in this case now, obviously, we have to give it a value. Now you'll see that the price has actually decreased. Okay, I'm going to make it 8. But my quantity has still increased. Okay, I'm going to make it 120 again. Okay, so what is my new exchange rate? Okay, at E1, my new exchange rate. Okay, it is going to be 8 Rand to $1. Okay, so again, we can see now that less Rand in this case now. now. We used to give 10 Rand to buy a dollar. Now we are giving only 8 Rand. So less Rand is given for each dollar that we want to buy. Okay, so each dollar is now only costing us 8 Rand, where it used to cost us 10 Rand. So what happened to the value of the rand? In this case, the rand is the one that appreciated and the dollar is the one that depreciated. All right, less rand is given for a dollar. So the rand became stronger. But for each dollar that they give us, in the past when they gave us one dollar, we used to give them 10 rand. Now we're only going to give them eight rand. So the dollar in this case depreciated, but the rand appreciated. Okay. Okay, so just to go back here quickly, you'll see the values that I, that I used on this graph is just slightly different, okay? But you'll see the same effect that supply increased, okay? If supply increases, we move it to the right, okay? New equilibrium, new exchange rate, and then we can see the rand appreciates and the dollar depreciates. Okay, now there's different ways for them to ask this question. As I said, data response, they give you the graph and you have to interpret the graph and answer questions based on the graph. They can ask you to draw the graph and explain your graph. They can give you a graph and explain, ask you to explain for eight marks what's happening in the graph. They can use dollar. They can use pound. They can use Chinese one. There's different ways to ask this. They can ask what is going to happen to the value of the rand if the demand for dollar is increasing. They can ask you what happens to the value of the rand if the demand for rand is increasing. Okay. Just remember, if they ask you what is going to happen to the value of the rand, if the demand for rand increases, then it will be the market for rand and your price will be in dollars. Okay, so you must look very, very, very carefully. When we do the activities, you'll see there's different examples there. I'm going, you're going to practice this because this is something that they ask almost every single year. It is very, very important. Okay.